YouTube show. For someone like me who is interested in getting their first greenhouse and installing it on a personal level, not a commercial level, what do I need to be looking for? And what do I need to know when I start my journey of research? Yeah, so there's a handful of things that are pretty important to consider before you even begin like shopping for greenhouses. Um, I'd say the biggest one that usually ends up not really being a big deal is licensing and permitting. Mm-hmm. Um, they, another one is, is where you're going to put your greenhouse, um, and how it will be oriented. Uh, you should have a plan for, well, in general, you, you want to know before you pick a greenhouse, like, what do you want to grow in it? When do you want to be growing in it? Um, cause those will determine like how big your greenhouse is or where you locate it. Uh, depending on the size of your greenhouse, you might have to consider, Uh, putting in a foundation um, uh, and pain material is is usually uh, the final consideration, but it might not even be a choice depending on whether you're buying a kit or building it yourself. So let's go back. Licensing. Why would someone need to get a license for a personal greenhouse? Yeah. So in the United States, anyway, um, we have two authorities that you need to consider when you're building a greenhouse. Um, there is the zoning. We might have to cut this part. Yeah, we have zoning regulations and we have building codes. Um, and you can find the information that you need. Almost always, you can just call your local city hall uh, and they'll be able to tell you what's up. So greenhouses can... They're typically considered an accessory building uh, as far as permits are are concerned, uh, which means that it's a a building on your property that is permanent um, and has a foundation usually. And so then they are subject to to certain regulations. Uh, The level of government that you have to interact with for greenhouses is typically your local municipality, um, which means that it There's no way for me to say broadly, like before you build a greenhouse, you need to fill out this form because every county and every city will have their own, like some don't consider greenhouses to be accessory buildings, some do. So you like, you really have to do your due diligence and call before you start. Um, So the blanket statement can be before you build a greenhouse, call your local (laughs) government office because it's going to change. It's going to be, so we can't tell you what form you need to fill out, but we do, we can tell you that you can't just go build a greenhouse. You need to call someone and make sure it's okay to install it. And they'll tell you what you need to do. That is the general rule. But I guess the caveat is if you're doing like a small greenhouse or which probably more accurately called a cold frame, uh, where you like don't need to set up a foundation or anything. Mm -hmm. Um, Usually like those kind of cheap kits that you get from Amazon or whatever that cost like $500 or less. um, Those aren't really considered permanent structures uh, because they don't have a foundation. And those are typically not uh, like regulated in any way. You can usually throw those wherever you want without anyone getting mad. Okay. It's just when you start pouring foundation, installing electricity, putting in ventilation, that's where you got to worry about it. Okay, cool. So first you had said licensing, then you had said orientation and gardening zones. So gardening zones, knowing where and what you're growing, because if you live in New York, like me, you're going to have a brutal winter Mm -hmm. where unless you have a full heater set up, there's no way that your plants are going to make it through. Whereas if you're growing in... Texas, we have a wonderful member of our garden society, Dina, who has a gorgeous greenhouse that she, I think, grows in year round. Um, I know she takes some of her plants out in the summer, Mm. but, you know, we all have such different zones. Um, What do you mean with orientation? Yeah, well, that's a pretty easy one. Um, You, the point of a greenhouse is to capture sunlight or or rather the heat from the sunlight usually. Um, and and maximize the exposure your plants get. Um, The best way to do this in the Northern hemisphere, well, in both hemispheres, is to align like the spine of your greenhouse, the roof, um, going east to west. Okay. That that will ensure that uh, you get the maximum amount of sun, uh, both in the winter and in the summer, because the 
the sun will, you know, kind of veer about in its uh, relative position to the earth. And uh, in the winter, you get a lot more sun from the south, which is mm -hmm. important. Um, and this is reversed if you're in the other hemisphere, uh, not the north one. Um, Shout so out yeah, to that's... our listeners for, in Australia. We love you. Sorry, everything <laughs> exactly. is flipped upside down for you guys. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure to anchor your greenhouses really tight so they don't fall off the planet. Um, yeah. <laughs> the yeah, east to west on the spine is important so that you have maximum sun on your north and south, like your okay. longest part of your greenhouse. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And then you mentioned, now this is the thing that I'm the most curious about, the painting material, because, you know, I've been playing around with getting one of those mini indoor little greenhouses to set up in my office that you put mm -hmm. a grow light in that almost looks like flimsy plastic. It looks like yeah. almost cellophane. And then you see these amazing greenhouses with window, you know, reclaimed window panes, yeah, you see like plastic stained ones, stained glass, mm -hmm. um, but then you see plastic ones, then you see true glass ones. So what are the pros and cons of all of those different types of panes as we are trying to assess what the best choice for our specific space would be? Sure. There are a handful of different materials that greenhouses are made out of. Um, glass is the obvious one. Uh, glass is classic. Um, it's expensive. It's fragile. Um, it's not a great insulator in general. And insulation is really important for greenhouses, especially if you're in a northern climb. Um, but glass is pretty great because it lasts forever, more or less, and it is super easy to maintain. Um, so it's like a great long-term option for permanent greenhouses. Polycarbonate is probably the most common material used for greenhouse construction. Okay. Um, it's, it is strong and it's light. Uh, much lighter than glass. It's it's pretty durable. I think on average, like a polycarbonate sheet will last 10 years or something before it starts to yellow or or degrade. Um, obviously, if you're if you're buying polycarbonate for purposes of, of putting on a greenhouse, you'll want to make sure that you get uh, like the UV resistant kind. Otherwise, it'll turn yellow really quickly. Mm, and okay. that'll be ugly. But I guess more importantly, it'll reduce the amount of light your plants get. Um, the, another common material is acrylic or, you know, has some brand names like plexiglass. Uh, it is not very dissimilar, uh, to polycarbonate. It's, it's pretty strong. It's pretty durable. Uh, it's fairly expensive. I think it's a bit heavier usually. Um, the big thing you have to know is that acrylic, uh, it expands and contracts uh, with heat and cold more so than other materials. And so depending on like the thickness of your acrylic, you might need to have a special mounting solution to attach it to, to the greenhouse. So that's okay. sort of like a, you probably won't go with acrylic unless you're, you're using a kit that was built for it. Um, so the last like really common one is polyethylene. And this is another plastic that you're pretty familiar with. Um, you know, hoop houses, which are just like the kind of round ones that mm -hmm. they look like they have really flimsy plastic on them. Uh, like it looks like grocery bags. Um, and it basically is, it's, uh, it's really, they don't look totally transparent, but they let through almost as much light as the other materials. Um, however, they're typically meant to be used just for like one season. Um, mm -hmm. you can buy polyethylene in rolls and you just like roll it over your hoop house. Uh, and then you're supposed to get rid of it at the end of the season. Um, all of these materials come in single pane options or they come in like multi-pane options. And that's important for insulation. Uh, like you will, might find like a double walled polycarbonate or something and it has air gaps inside to like drastically improve your insulation. Um, and I would probably, if you were building your own greenhouse, I would, not choose to buy any of these materials in rolls. Uh, I would I would just buy the the panes or the sheets and and use those. Who passes accepted? <laughs>